Okay, oh. dude. <laughs> oh no! This is what we were talking about. That was amazing. The setup was perfect. I'm Lim Cube and I do speedruns of Breath of the Wild since 2019, which is, was kind of like the peak of new glitches being discovered. And I kind of helped shape the game in that time. I'm a router traditionally, so I basically uh, use those new mechanics in order to make new speedruns happen. And I still do it actively to this day. And I'm here today to react to some interesting new Breath of the Wild clips. And my name is Max, also known as Rin Harasaki. Uh, I've been playing this game since late 2017. One of the first combat guys, uh, not the best anymore, obviously, but uh, I've been been in the game for quite a while now and specialized in combat techniques so here we go shrine aisle it looks like it so far that was clean yeah that that's an alpha clip i'm pretty sure like if i see an IL that looks like this i haven't actually seen this run but alpha is one of the craziest like cleanest runs i've ever seen and this is in my opinion the uh, worst shrine, casually. So being able to skip this uh, nicely is pretty cool. It's the Z Karsho Shrine, which is at the uh, south a color stable. And usually you play this like motion control puzzle with like a three orbs that you have to get in each of the correct like alcoves. It's horrid. Um, I think casually, at least I remember I struggled a lot with it. Those are always super satisfying to watch. I don't know why. Yeah. Just like doing something in, like two seconds is so, so cool. I feel like as well, like after doing ILs myself, it's also um it looks really cool but after like behind all of these ILs are uh, like a thousand clips where it didn't work like that's always something that you have to think about how much work it actually takes to get these it's pretty cool again uh an il stands for individual level so these are uh these are shrine speed runs that are on their own they don't have anything to do with like a whole speed run process it's just one shrine run that's it individual level that's what it stands for okay, now we're fighting ah I know this guy, his name is Paper. Okay. Oh Sweet. <laughs> Damn, those are clean beams. So there's a, a couple weird things going on here. Uh, let's go back to like... Like right there. So what's going on here is usually when there's like a pack of Lizolfos surrounding you, you'll have a lot of Lizolfos, like one, usually one or two at a time, like come to attack you. And the Lizolfos head hitbox leans really far forward. So as he was aiming at this other Lizolfos, so the Lizolfos came behind him and his head hitbox actually went into the arrow that he was shooting it and launched Ooh. him backwards, which is really cool. So like, yeah, oh, like I see it, at yeah. that point. So it was really cool to kind of sing tricks with Lizolfos head hitboxes, you know, like standing below them and they won't see you because their head hitbox doesn't reach below. It doesn't make any sense sometimes. Also, I really actually like, and this is just a small detail, most of these like combat montage players, um, you included and others have like their signature outfits. And one thing I like about this combo specifically, actually, I really have I've noticed this from Master Sword speedruns. I like the combo of like the sh shield of Mind's Eye and the Master Sword because because they kind of like overlap each other. When it's like on his back, like here, looks like a like a bigger weapon. It's pretty cool. Yeah, the Mind's Eye is uh, is actually a pretty small shield, so it it does like get like show a lot of the extra features behind Link. So it, it does look pretty cool. Actually, it's a pretty nice combo. <laughs> Okay, oh. dude. <laughs> oh no! This is what we were that, talking about. That was amazing. The setup was perfect. <laughs> so it, it seemed pretty, I don't know, simple until it reached the end. When I was doing a speed run about feed, feeding dogs, uh, dog percent, uh, you have to get a lot of these chests. And there's actually a mechanic in the game where if you use motion controls while your magnesis a chest and like flick up, that's how you get the chest out like faster. And I think that's what they did there to launch both of them up. So I feel that part was intentional. I don't think the next part was intentional. Yeah, actually, um, that is a trick for pulling the, the chest out while you're not on it. But this specifically is called a magnesis chest launch. So if you're basically standing on the the chest that's buried and you magnesis it and your, and your feet are actually on it, it will immediately take you out of magnesis and launch you upwards, like immediately um, without you pushing anything. 
So uh, this sets up for really cool combos because you can like shoot the chest with Magnesis while you're in the air with like Thunder Arrows. So you can do like a whole bunch of like damage like that. But I've never seen it to launch an enemy as well at the same time, yeah. which is insane. Um, and the fact that because the Bokoblin wasn't ragdolled during this and like flailing around, he was actually in a standing position, in a standing state while he was up in the air. So he just shot him out of the air, <laughs> yeah, which was insane. The, the Bokoblin was actually recording for his uh, combat montage there. <laughs> No bullet time. <laughs> Wait, I'm actually surprised that I haven't seen this. It actually stayed on there for a long time. I don't know the exact name for it. Cleric has looked into a lot more it's basically just like turning a guardian and a boat into a spaceship and what you do is you cut off all the guardian's legs and you it's easiest at this location here because you can use cryonis to kind of basically flip and push the the guardian onto a boat once they do it for just some odd reason i don't know why uh the game just freaks out and levitates the guardian on its own um I, it has something to do with the legs not being present and it being on something else, but again, I have no explanation for it. Um, it's basically just called a spaceship, and you can ride with the Guardian if you want upwards, and it'll just go for a long time. Um, it's actually pretty hard to do because it's really uncontrollable, and sometimes it'll just spiral out of control and like flip out and like just randomly zoom out in nowhere. For this, it looks like he was trying to set it up, but he had other ideas, and the Guardian just started to take off on his own. <laughs> Let's look at this one. That's something I um, actually already found this week, and I wanted to show you. Um, okay. It's an, another interesting uh... <laughs> You know what? I've seen this one already, too. Uh -huh. I have seen this one. Okay, so um, with my limited speedrun mm -hmm. knowledge, I'm going to guess what... Okay, yeah, it's, as a mini game here, I'm going to guess what happened, and then you're going to correct me. So... I'm gonna say first that this was first a horse slide to get to the door. Um, this must have been a specific right. horse slide to get in that direction towards the, the front door. And then as soon as he got there, he did an extended shield clip, but that was very, very, like, I'm, I'm, it almost looks like he got the skew on the way to the door and then he clipped through the wall. Like this was a ton of inputs. I, I don't think he got the skew there. Uh, I think it must have been one that's stronger because you can see it actually like tilt uh, pretty heavily. Oh, that's right, yeah. Um, so I think the skew he did already have, but like it, it is a horse slide, which is just really cool for shrines. So basically you set up like a horse slide in a specific direction. There's only very few shrines where it is being used, but that's, you can basically, this is one of the coolest visuals here. <laughs> As you basically see Link already zoom out of the elevator. So uh, for for people who aren't really knowledged uh, with, with the two glitches, can you explain sort of what's going on? Yeah, so basically um, a horse light is something you set up in the overworld. You don't actually set it up in a shrine. So basically start a momentum going into the load zone um, of the shrine. Then you start the slide. And an extended shield clip is something that um, is also used in speedruns. There's normal clipping, which is done all over the any percent speedrun. You clip into the shrine walls to skip the activation of the tower. An extended shield clip uh, makes the entire thing a little bit harder. It actually gets frame perfect. You have to re-equip your shield on a perfect frame and then basically do a shield jump mid-shield jump. That way you are allowed to clip through thicker doors. Maybe some runners you can catch doing that um, at the Cryonis Shrine. You can actually clip through the door instead of to the sides. That's what speedruns always used to do. But nowadays people actually even clip through the door. And that's an ESC, Extended Shield Clip. Makes it frame perfect. And the one thing that's tough about this, the D-pad menu in the game isn't quite perfect. So it's actually not 100% consistent because you can't even fr uh, like pause frame perfectly. It's literally impossible. Like the game doesn't let you. So it's a bit tricky. But uh, once again, an IL usually takes many, many attempts and when it works out, it looks like this. Got 
lightning action. That always looks so cool. But this is the cool part. Okay, so there's there's a there's a couple things going on here. So he's basically uh, he's timing all this process while there's thunderstorm going on, and the thunderstorm strikes you like once a, a minute, I think, or something like that. And so he's he's got to do this a couple times to make this work. This is not easy to do. So when a Lionel is stuck on an object, um, usually like this goo um, or some other object, sometimes like curbs and stuff, yeah. it'll attempt to jump up in the air and attack you. That that's the way it's just getting out. Um, so to to force the Lionel into this position during the thunderstorm during the specific time is not easy to do. It's 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 he must have taken a long time to do this. So he places the square bomb ahead of time. He stasis the Lionel. So then as soon as the Lionel stasis, he shield block resets. So a uh, shield block reset is basically a technique where you explode the bomb and you jump into the bomb's explosion um, with a shield and it'll knock you up into the air and get you a double jump basically. So he stasis the Lionel. He did a shield block reset to get into the air and it goes immediately into a thunderclap rush. And what's cool about this obviously is he's got timing. all sorts of thunder effects is going on and stuff like that. So. To get this, this, the stasis, to get the shield block creations, to get the thunder, to get the Lionel in that position, to get that jump, that's, there's so, this looks very cool, obviously, from this point of perspective, but as yeah. a content creator, knowing this clip must have taken forever to get. Because the inputs are already obviously hard to do, and then you have to work with the game, because that lightning strike, like you said, it's not like, you can't control it. Yeah. Obviously, um, like in his case, it must have been because the Lionel wields a metal weapon that it actually struck him. Or is it even, that, is, is that even what happens? Or is he... So, I, yeah, I, I, I've seen AXK do this, and I, I need to play around with the thunder mechanics more, but um, there's definitely some mechanic between slowdown and stasis and thunderstorms, where... Uh, you can make the thunder strike the st the stasis enemy and not yourself because obviously he had a master yeah. sword so he had if he was just standing out and about like this he would have gotten struck by lightning yeah. but instead the lionel got struck instead and you can actually see that at, at the beginning of the clip the light is uh, the lightning is like targeting him but then as soon as he's actually uh, starting to shoot with the bow um that's when it jumps over to the Lionel, like after the first shot. There's new hidden mechanics for every player, and that's the cool thing about Breath of the Wild, is there's always something new for everybody. There's no ending to this game. There's always something new that you can learn. It's incredible. Like, even the smallest facts, like someday you will discover that when you open your menu at a cooking pot, it will bring up your materials instead of the menu you had previously opened. Like small facts like that, that's like something you uncover after like two years. Interesting. You know, again, I learned something new today too. Thanks for watching! If you like this format and want to see more, then let us know in the comments below. And if you want to see my solo react videos or my breakdowns for Breath of the Wild, then check out the links in the description below. And make sure if you want to stay up to date for anything Breath of the Wild, stay tuned right here on GameSpot. One bonus to jump at your own risk. Is, is this 2005? <laughs> wow, okay. Uh, that, okay, you got me.